In bioinformatics, one of the widely used models is hidden Markov models. And uh, in the hidden Markov models, uh, the two important probability collectations are emission probability and uh, transition probabilities. So more or less in most of the cases, the emission probability calculation is relatively easy, while the transition probability is a bit difficult. So I just made an attempt to uh, explain how exactly the uh, transition probability is calculated uh, for one of the multiple sequence alignment as an example in this case. So before we go for the hidden Markov model, uh, uh, first we look for the Markov model. So whenever we say Markov model, um, it is like moving in a one direction. So Markov chain can be considered as a process that moves in one direction from one state to another state. And that state transition, uh, state probability is the transition probability. So one of the widely used uh, example uh, is the uh, signal change of the traffic lights. So that is one of the example for uh, Marco models. So like uh, a simple representation, which is a linear state and uh, something like green light switches on after red light and which switches on after yellow light. So if it moves from one to two, so probability of one to two, probability of two to three, probability of two, three to four, and four to five. We have like zero order, first order, second order, and uh, in gene prediction, it goes to fifth order Marco model. Zero order is like, which is independent of the previous state. First order is dependent on one previous state. And then second order Marco model refers to the present state is dependent on two previous states. Something like, for example, uh, a case of a codon, let us say if we uh, look for uh, ATG, so the uh, representation that this ATG codes for a methionine can be determined only by looking into two previous states. Let us say for if we are working on this G, so what there before, that is also important and what there before this T is also important. So two states before this G that decides what should be the corresponding amino acid is. So that, that is one of the example for second order Marco model. So Marco model is a in a linear sequence or directly observable. And in some situations, it becomes too difficult to see. In other words, becomes a non-observed uh, factors and uh, especially in uh, multiple sequence alignments, uh, we have like gapped alignments and then the, uh, if we can see the gaps, usually they do not correspond to any residues and are considered as unobserved states because either it's an insertion or deletion. So the gap in the alignment is too difficult to decide what exactly it tells. So it is referred as unobservable observable states. Gaps indirectly influence the transition probability of the observed states. So each state may be composed of a number of elements or symbols. So what is the probability that particular uh, nucleotide present in that particular state? That is, we will get to know from the emission um, probability. So which is relatively easy to calculate. But in the multiple sequence alignment, if we have a gap, in the uh, MSA, those are like unobservable states, or in other words, it is referred as a hidden state. So what should be the emission probability and also the corresponding transition probability for those states is one of the major challenge that is there. So the functional hidden Markov model best represents with reference to sequence alignment. They are the trained models and with these trained models, it becomes very easy to determine if there is any unknown sequence, whether that unknown sequence belongs to a particular uh, protein family or not, or a model can be constructed. So usual representation, a typical representation of the hidden Markov model. So B refers to the beginning of the state, then the match state, match one, two, three, E is the end state. I1, I2, I3, I4 refers to insertion one, two, three, four, 
d1 d2 d3 refers to deletion one two three different states so in the same way we can have like multiple insertion states multiple deletion states and then the match state so always it starts from the begin and then it goes up to the end state so we look into the average sequence length in the family then we can decide whether it's a best fit to a particular family or not so one of the database in the van frontex that is the protein family database pfam is developed using this hidden marco model now if we look into one of the example how it works so this is the multiple sequence alignment and in the first uh, column if we observe so a is there four times and t is there once so it is a is four out of five that is nothing but four divided by five so 0.8 so emission probability is 0.8 T is there once, one out of five, that is 0.2. Same with the second column. So C is there again, uh, four times, four out of five is 0.8. So for the C, it is put as 0.8. Then the G is there once, so that is 0.2. The third column goes in the same way. Again, A is there four out of five, so 0.8. Then the 0.2, that is C. Then this whole region wherever we have the gaps this is considered to be an insertion state then again it continues with the next columns and then we have this a which is there as a conserved 5 out of 5 so that is 1.0 as emission probability t is there 4 out of uh, 5 so 0.8 and then the 0.8 for the C, which is there at the last column. Now, the major challenge associated uh, is in the calculation of the transition probability for this insertion state. So, the emission pro transition probability 1 and 1 is relatively easy to calculate because there is no gaps and uh, the states are clearly moving from one to another one. So, the first three are nothing but the first column is this one, second column is this one, and the third column is this. Now the fourth column, nothing but the gap to one, this is what this state represents. Now we will work out how we are going to get this 0 0.6, 0 0.4, and then this 0 0.8, and then this 0 0.4. So we have one, two, three, four transition probabilities generated for this insertion state. Now the, the same multiple sequence alignment is placed here. So there are five sequences similar to this one. So sequence one, two, three, four, five. Five sequences, then the three columns, then the gap state, and then continues with the one, two, three. This is fourth, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four five six seven so the same thing when we put the alignment is converted so here if we observe and look for the transition probability calculation so for each understanding i have put this transition probability uh, over here the table that was generated along with this multiple sequence alignment now probability of making an insertion is so how exactly the insertion is going to happen in this particular state insertion state that is nothing but this 0.6 now the first state one and one is not a problem that is a to c it is continuous so all the sequences are in the position so emission transition probability one then the second one is also this continuous it is there now we have three nucleotides which are making an insertion out of five something like these dotted lines whatever is placed here this is one this is two and this is three so three nucleotides are having a possibility of insertion in this gap state. So three out of five is nothing but 0.6. That is this 
Now the emission probability can be calculated in a similar way. So the fourth state is actually the complete sequence. Whatever is there in the fourth state is this one. So A is there one, so 0.2, C is there twice, that is 0.4, and then T is there one out of five, 0.2, G is there once, that is 0.2. The next transition probability which is occurring is how many times this uh, possibility or the transition probability that is going to happen by itself. So itself, that means it is not going to the next state, but within the state, how many times it is going to happen. That is this point four is nothing but this point four itself. That is A to C, that is this one, A to C and C to T is transiting within the inserted state that is happening 2 out of 5 that is 0.4 2 out of 5 what is the probability that it goes to the next state from this inserted state so the next state that it goes is 3 out of 5 that is whatever is marked with the red color that is t to the next state is happening once C to the next state is happening is another one. Though the gaps are there, but what we calculate here is that it goes from this to the next state because fourth is considered to be one state only irrespective of where they are present. So let us say if the C is present here, so even we consider C is moving from this to this as a next state movement. And then the G is moving from here to the A that is another one. So there are three red color lines that is three out of five, nothing but 0.6 that is this 0.6. Now another one is how many, what is the probability that is this 0.4 if we look for, how is this coming out is how many, uh, what is the probability that it won't undergo this insertion state at all? So that is 2 out of 5, it won't undergo any insertion state at all. So if I erase everything, so this star symbol represents that it moves from the state 3 to state 5 without any insertion. That is again in the sequence 4, it moves from A to A without any insertions. So that is no insertion state is required. So it moves directly from state 3 to state 5. That is 2 out of 5, that is 0.4. That is what is this 0.4 represents. Then again, it continues. So similar to 5 to 6, no issues. So the 5 to 6 is transition probability being 1. 6 to 7 transition probability being 1 and then the emission probability is already calculated. So once we know the or construct or create this hidden Marco model for any uh, multiple sequence alignment, if we get any unknown sequence, so we can easily back calculate whether it fits to the model or not. So how is this calculation is done is A, whether A is there in the first state, yes, what is its probability that is 0.8 and then the transition probability is 1, then C is there, yes, C is there, which is the emission probability 0.8, transition probability to the next is 1, then again A is there, yes, A is there, so that is 0.8, then what is next is the C. Now C it cannot go to the next state here directly from this to this because the emission probability of C is zero here, nothing is. So C is considered to be an insertion state. So this C will go into the insertion state here. That is why the emission uh, transition probability is 0.6, 
the emission probability is 0.4 for the C. And then comes the A. A is very high, emission probability 1. So we'll move from here to here, which is 0.6, then 1. Then after this A, we have a T. T probability is 0.8. So 1 is the transition probability, 0.8 is the emission probability. Again, 1 is the M transition probability. C is at the end, so C is 0.8. So 0.8 is the emission probability. So when we multiply everything, we get like 4.7 and 10 to the power of minus 2. That tells how good is this fits into this particular model. Thank you very much.